especially to the north and east, some thunderstorms right now. Once again, that's in northern and eastern parts of our viewing area. Otherwise, the potential for a few thunderstorms around low temperature, 58 degrees tonight. It's about 40% chance of rain here in Olean, so we could see some, we could miss it. Yep, the WVTT Severe Weather Action Team keeping an eye on that for you here on WVTT. World News Roundup. In Germany, consumer about right-wing extremism is growing. The country has spent decades trying to atone for Nazism and the Holocaust, but now one neo-Nazi group has found a very public way of spreading its message of hate. Isha Sise explains. They appear in the middle of the night, unannounced and armed with torches. Their faces hidden behind plain white masks it is a frightening scene that resembles the Nazi torch marches of the 1930s. But this was filmed only a few months ago in Germany, filmed by neo-Nazis themselves. After the march, they upload the video on the internet to propagate their ideology, adding pompous music to support their message that multiculturalism is killing Germany. They try to achieve attraction by young people. But the idea is awkward. It's an even mystical idea. We are already killed. And we are killed by the system, by black ones, Muslim ones, Jews ones. It's a racist idea. It's an apocalyptic idea. So it's an utterly radical group. These neo-Nazis call themselves the Immortals, a group that German officials describe as a serious and growing concern. They emerged in May last year when a few hundred neo-Nazis marched through the East German town of Baufsen, a flash mob organized over the internet or using text messages. Their signs target the mainstream political parties. Democrats are causing the death of our people. Other banners call for action. Destroy the lies of the Democrats, meaning people who support multiculturalism. Experts say their rhetoric is dangerous. They are already attacking people or attacking institutions. So also this way of being radical is not without violence. And of course, they are interlinked to a degree with uh, violent groups. It's a concern that German law enforcement agencies share. More than a dozen homes of the neo-Nazis have been raided this year to find members of the immortals. A few weeks ago, the German state of Brandenburg banned the organization because of its destructive ideology. But the threat remains. One organization is forbidden in one state. In other states, uh, they are not forbidden. So they can renew themselves. It's a very simple idea. Put masks on your faces and represent the, uh, the danger to the people. And the rallies continue in real life and online. Some of the internet videos have been viewed by tens of thousands of people and almost all of them end with a chilling message. Your short life, make it immortal. Aisha Sasei, CNN, Atlanta. A former Canadian youth pastor who is HIV positive has been arrested for allegedly trying to lure a teenage boy online for sex. As John Baglieri reports, authorities believe there could be more victims. The Lakeview Church congregation is in shock and disbelief. At Sunday Mass, it was revealed to the congregation that a former youth pastor, who the police say is HIV positive, was arrested for allegedly arranging to meet a 15-year-old boy for sex. As you can imagine, we're deeply saddened and uh, a lot of heavy hearts in our, in our midst. Chris Gowdy, seen here in photos posted by church members, was arrested Thursday east of Toronto. Police allege he befriended a 15-year-old boy online, then set up a location where they were to meet for sex. Police say the boy was actually an undercover officer, and Gowdy was taken into custody at the location. Gowdy is a youth pastor in southern Ontario. Police say in the last decade he has held that position in a number of churches across Canada and the U.S., including at Lakeview Church right here in Saskatoon. Gowdy was a youth pastor here at Lakeview Church from June 2011 to July 2012. Church officials say there were no complaints about him from the congregation. 
Police say in 2009, Gowdy admitted to having been diagnosed with HIV. They allege he used the profile name College Toy 2033 on a number of social media sites. Among the interests he listed on this blog is teens. Lakeview Church officials wouldn't say much about his character. We are fully cooperating with the police and don't feel it appropriate to comment on, on our impression with dealing with him while he was here. The church has brought in two professional counsellors to provide support for youth and families in the congregation. At the moment, the primary concern of our church is our people, especially the youth in our care. We are focused, focusing all of our time and attention on looking after our families. Investigators are concerned there may be other victims. The Saskatoon police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Police today arrested a man accused of stealing $60,000 worth of computers and computer equipment from the home of the late Steve Jobs. That's according to a media outlet in San Jose. The alleged robber is being identified as Carriam McFarlane. The alleged robbery occurred about a month ago when the vacant house was under construction. Well, six bedrooms, nine bathrooms, and a dining room for 30 people. The only thing missing in this Manhattan condo is a buyer with $100 million. It really puts into perspective the fact that the house prices in the U.S. are finally on the rise. CNN's Felicia Taylor reports. This is the view that you get from what is the most expensive apartment to ever be listed in the New York real estate market. But this isn't the only view. It wraps around the entire apartment, all three floors for a 360 degree panoramic view. But for a $100 million price tag, it's not just the view that you're going to get. We're going to take a look at some of the other amenities. We get an exclusive tour of the penthouse from Howard Lorber, chairman of the listing agent Prudential Douglas Elliman. Has there been any interest already? Well, there has been. We've had a couple of very important showings, and we have a few more lined up. Six bedrooms and nine bathrooms, located on the top of the city spire building on Manhattan's west side. What makes this apartment so spectacular? Well, I think the most important part of this apartment is the views. This is a view apartment. You have terraces. You have over 3,000 feet of terraces facing the city, the east side, the west side, north to the park, south to downtown. A hundred million dollar asking price. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's steep for mm -hmm. anybody out there. Is the view really what's going to capture it? Pricing apartments today, it's, it's not, it's not a, a science, you know. If this is what the owner wants for the apartment. It'll either sell or won't sell. Leading this is the, the dining, dining room, room, which can see 20, 30 people at least. So come on, I like to cook. You like to cook? Yeah. Okay. Show me the kitchen. I'm not going to test you with cooking, though. <laughs> but how would you like to be here cooking and looking at this view? Oh, my goodness. The river, wow. then downtown. And while sales of less swank Manhattan homes have been flat, business is booming in the so-called super prime sector. The high end of the market has reached a new high. The low and middle has not. It has come back and it's close to where it was before, but it hasn't, you know, gone past it. There are plenty of buyers, a lot of foreign buyers and uh, local buyers also. I think it's a reflection of a general interest in high end everything. You know, if you're a luxury consumer and there are, very, there are a lot of them out there still, you're looking at a place to put your money that's reliable, it's a hard asset class, and that could include a boat, it could include a plane, it could include a great piece of art, watches and jewelry, or an incredibly fabulous piece of real estate. And fabulous real estate is going fast. At least four deals within eight months. 52 million bought one American, a luxe pad on Park Avenue. Another American bought the penthouse at the Ritz-Carlton on Central Park for 70 million, 88 million, earned a Russian family a penthouse on Central Park West. And the yet-to-be-completed 157 has a deal on the table for about 90 million, possibly with a Middle Eastern royal. Back in the triplex, here's more of what a lot of money can buy. For a $100 million asking price, naturally, to get to the second and third floors, you have your private elevator. The master bedroom sits at the top, and right above it, the massive dome that caps the building. The penthouse owner controls when it's lit adding to the New York City skyline. Whoever the buyer may be for this apartment, the sky certainly seems to be the limit when it comes to New York City real estate. From high atop Gotham, I'm Felicia Taylor, CNN, New York. The Buffalo Bills are making Bill Leavers out of more in the Twin Tiers. WVTT's Derek Smith is standing by with sports next here on News Channel 25, WVTT.